What's up everyone, Tyler DeLuca here, and I'm back with my three takeaways from this past week in women's basketball. It was absolutely an insane week of women's basketball. There's so many things to take away, but here are my top three. I've talked about her before, I'll talk about her again. Juju Watkins, y'all. I've kind of run out of ways to describe her, but she went and dropped 51 on Stanford, who was at the time the number four team in the nation, y'all. I don't know what to say anymore about how incredible Juju is, how ridiculous it is that she's able to do these things at this time so early on in her career. 51. She almost outscored Stanford, the number four team in the nation, by herself. And she's still playing defense while doing it. It's like if someone said, okay, here's a lab. You can change anything you want. Build a perfect basketball player. When you when you think about the skills, when you think about the poise, the mentality, the personality, Juju looks like she was built from a lab to be one of the greatest women's basketball players to ever do it. It's ridiculous. She like heard it's like she heard all the noise about Hannah. By Hannah Hidalgo. She heard the noise about Caitlin Clark. I said, all right, but. And then went and dropped 51 on the road against the number four team in the nation. What? I, I can't comprehend that. That was genuinely one of, if not the greatest individual performances I've seen. I, Juju Watkins is ready for it all. There hasn't been a single thing that she's not been ready for. I don't know how far USC as a team goes, but it's going to be going as far as Juju can take them. And frankly, at this point, there's not a height that they can't reach with Juju. Now, I don't know if they will, but just the potential, the possibility, there's nothing that they can't do. And that's ridiculous, though. That, that, that's ridiculous. But it's the truth. Juju Watkins is coming for everything. She's going to be carrying USC on her back. To try and take them to everything that they can reach. The Pac-12 championship. The national championship. And right now. When Juju's playing like that. Nobody's stopping them. Nobody's stopping them. Now you can't expect her to do that every night. But nobody is stopping them. When Juju Watkins is on. Because right now. She's the national player of the year. Alright now let's talk about a team that Juju will be facing next year. In the Big Ten. Ohio State. Because they're back y'all. They're back. They were actually my preseason national champion pick going into this season. They didn't start off great. They lost to Juju first game. But that was Juju's coming out party was against Ohio State. And part of what made it so incredible was the projections of what Ohio State could be. And realistically, they weren't at that level. They weren't. They, they had been disappointing on several occasions this season. And I think a big reason why that they were having those struggles was because Cody McMahon was struggling. The sophomore who I remember I tweeted out at some point last season was like, this is a future number one pick in the WNBA draft. The build, the capabilities to do everything. But I think she kind of got on the scouting report and, and people, I don't want to say they, she kind of figured it out, but she was struggling. And then she played Iowa and had that incredible, incredible game against Iowa. And she's been on a roll ever since. And this is a completely different team when Cody McMahon's on a roll. They have the defense. They have, you know, Celeste Taylor, who transferred from Duke. They have J.C. Sheldon, who is an incredible point guard, who will be a, more than likely a first-round pick in this year's draft. Ohio State is back. This is the Ohio State that I projected to see going into this season. Now, I don't think they're the national champion right now. Uh, but I do think... If Cody McMahon keeps playing like this, that they absolutely can reach the heights that I had kind of projected for them in the preseason. It was them and UConn, admittedly, in my preseason picks. That was before UConn got hurt. And pretty quickly, my Ohio State pick, I was like, well, I was wrong on that. But now all of a sudden, now I don't think they're going to be in South Carolina right now. But all of a sudden, that pick starting to make a little bit more sense. And it's because Cody McMahon. She is incredible. Her ability to rebound, her ability to get her own to create her own shot at times but whenever she's in the post 
And especially because she has the capability to dribble around the perimeter and, and to shoot at times. They often oftentimes the mismatch there is amazing for Ohio State and for Cody McMahon. So whenever you kind of get her into that high post elbow extended area, she can work because she can rip through and get to the lane. She can back you down. Cody McMahon is an incredible player. I was disappointed, honestly, earlier in this season, but just because my expectations were so high and now she's at those expectations. She has the capability to be a top lottery pick when it's her time comes in the WNBA draft. And I think we're seeing that development now. And with that development, Ohio State's now back up into the top five, which they were very far away from at times during this season, especially earlier on. And they look like a top five team. I, I genuinely believe this is the team that I was like, this team could go win the national championship. Because they're built on defense. They have star players. They have floor spacing. They can do it. I trust a team like Ohio State. They have plenty of problems still to figure out. So I, I'm not saying I trust them all the way to the extent that I had put, put, kind of projected earlier in the season. But they're making their way there. They have the talent. They have the stars. They have the defense. They're, the principles that they have is, a, is the type of principles that a team that can make a deep run into March Madness has. I'm very excited to see them, and especially Cody McMahon, really piecing it together. And that's one of my biggest takeaways from this past week. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I've been waiting for this moment. You can tell you got the logos back here. You can tell where I'm from. What school I went to. And y'all... It's time to talk about the number 24th ranked Oklahoma Sooners because they've been on a roll. This season started off incredibly shaky in the non-con. Four losses, including double-digit losses, two double-digit losses to, to Princeton and to UNLV. They lost to a 1-9 Southern at the time at home. Not a great non-conference. And the other loss was to Tennessee. But that, that Southern loss was the one that I was like, man, I don't know really what to expect the rest of the way here. But then we got to Big 12 play. They start off against kind of some of the lower teams. I and mean, then they go to Kansas State with a healthy Aoka Lee, and they lose that one. Not, not a terrible loss by any means. Obviously, winning K-State's one of the best teams in the nation when they're healthy. Then they go on this run. They beat Texas. They beat Kansas. They beat Kansas State. They beat Oklahoma State. Four very, very solid wins, including two that are top 10 wins. And now all of a sudden... Oklahoma's back in the rankings. Now, all of a sudden, they're at the top of the Big 12. The The team that we saw lose those games in the non-conference is not the same team that we are seeing now. This team, it, it's hard to kind of quantify exactly. Yes, you're having phenomenal performances from Skylar Van, who just won Big 12 Player of the Week last week. You're, you're seeing Peyton Verholz put up nearly triple doubles against Oklahoma State. Those performances are there, but it's what you can't really quantify that's standing out to me because now more than ever, they seem very connected. And what I mean by connected is that everyone's moving in the same way. On defense, the feet are moving the ball. Like it's rotating. The passes are much better. The turnovers are down. Everything is just clicking right now for Oklahoma. And with the offensive firepower that they have, now that they're mixing in the reduced turnovers. Now they're mixing in the increase on the defensive end compared to earlier times in the season. This team is dangerous, y'all. They beat yes, they beat Kansas State without a Yoko Lee, but that's still a very, very good Kansas State team. That's still a team that, in Texas that is very, very good that they went on the road and beat. I don't know exactly where to project them the rest of the way, but I'm telling you right now, this team is not the same team from earlier. I I'm, I'm feel much more comfortable at this point judging them off their Big 12 record than their overall record because they are absolutely cooking right now. And for me, it's a great time to be here in Oklahoma. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for my top three takeaways from this past week in women's basketball. Let me know what you think or if you have any takeaways of your own, and I'll see you next time.